Thank you so much for joining us on this week's Good News. Uh, we're sitting down with Liesl over at Agape Women's Services, and she's here to tell us all the good that you all are doing right now for the community, and particular for something that's coming up pretty soon as well. But first, can you uh, tell us a little bit about yourself, you know, what you do, at your what's your role at Agape Women's Services, and maybe what do you love most about working there? Sure. Thank you. Thanks for having me. I really appreciate the opportunity to just come and let the community know what's going on at Agape. Yeah. Um, at Agape, I am the education coordinator, and so I have the privilege of just helping our volunteers. We have about 15 volunteers that kind of walk with women um, when they have found out that they're pregnant and mm-hmm. they've um, decided to parent. Um, we get the opportunity to walk alongside them with some classes for their pregnancy to know what to expect. We also get to help them with classes for labor and delivery, um, parenting classes, things like that. We also offer biblical counseling. So a lot of times we're struggling with things just way beyond just what's going on with our physical bodies, but Mm. maybe anxiety, maybe depression, anger, frustration, all those different types of things. And we have the opportunity to um, kind of walk that with them as well and um, hopefully ultimately connect them to a good church community that can continue to they can have a relationship with yeah that's awesome i love that um so you're really focusing on women you know it's it's agape women's services um and what's your you've been there for you said before we started this you said you were there for about a couple two years now i've been the education coordinator for two years and then before that i started about two and a half years before that so i've been there about four and a half years oh okay okay awesome volunteering so what do you love most about working there I love the women okay. that God brings, whether it's the staff that I work with, the volunteers that I work with, or the women that God brings through the doors. Mm-hmm. Um, I love the relationships, and I love the way I see God work in the lives of women. Yeah, that's awesome. I love that. Yeah. Uh, um, it's difficult to be in a lot of these situations. Um, I know I know you know that for sure. Uh, so seeing good seeing people come out of it is is awesome that's i mean just to hold on to stuff like that um now you have something coming up in august yes it start you said august 2nd was is that correct august 2nd august 2nd okay yeah. tell us a little bit about that sure um one of the other things that we offer at agape is help for post-abortive um services so mm-hmm. um if a woman has had an abortion in her past and she's been finding that she's struggling with that mm-hmm. we're there to yeah. help them um we're there to walk with them support them and to remind them sometimes or sometimes to just even let them know that we have freedom and forgiveness in Christ. So um, the name of the Bible study kind of reflects that perfectly. It's called Forgiven and Set Free. Um, It's a 10-week study that um, women come into small groups, um, usually anywhere from two to eight Mm. would probably be the max, um, with some facilitators that have been trained to walk with them through this time. Um, And we get this opportunity to step into that painful part of their past Mm -hmm. and help apply the truth of scripture and God's word and the gospel to um, what they've experienced. A lot of times the average is um, about 20 years. Women have kept this a secret in their life and hidden it and um, not really shared it with anyone. Mm -hmm. Um, In our last study that we went through, um, we had a woman who participated who had kept that secret for way over 30 years and she was in her 70s um wow. for the first time um really s- stepped into that dealt with that and it was just powerful yeah. to watch god work and to see the healing that yeah. he brought um so yeah so it's exciting it's a lie that we believe yeah that if we hide it or make it go away that it'll just get better Mm -hmm. instead of god's word tells us is that we expose things to his light yeah that's where the healing comes definitely definitely and i had um i spoke with someone it was it was a few months ago um about she had an abortion and she was sharing a lot of how uh, she she knew the statistics about it but she was saying it's it's one of those things that's you don't want i mean you don't really want to share it Mm -hmm. but it's you're 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 ashamed a lot of times and it can go uh she knew someone that it like they had it when they were a teenager and they were in their 80s yeah 
and it was like their first time sharing yeah. and uh, it surprised me honestly and I know a lot of our listeners as well because before my conversation with her I didn't know the the statistics yeah of how many women actually have abortions right um, like I mean you hear numbers here and there but it was like I don't, I don't remember the exact statistics that she shared, but it was somewhere along the lines of like, you know, a, a large percentage of people even in the church that oh, you're going yeah. to church with. Yeah. One of the statistics I do know about that is like, um, I think it's one in four women. Okay. That's what I was kind of thinking. Yeah. That um, were attending church regularly, which mm-hmm. they define as two times a month Yeah. Um, when they had their abortion. Wow. You know, so that's hard. Yeah. You know, and um, and you're right, shame and guilt and all these things mm-hmm. um, just build up upon us and yeah. weigh us down in that kind of situation. Mm-hmm. So, um, and that's literally exactly what sin does in yeah. general. Yeah. You know, so this is just something that um, a specific way mm-hmm. to that God's word steps into that, speaks into that, cuts through yeah. all of that, and helps us to live a life of victory mm-hmm. in Jesus. Definitely. So. Definitely. No, I agree. And and something with it, too, is is you hear a lot when it comes to abortion, most of the stuff, um, and from my opinion, what you hear is just try to stop abortions. You know, we, gotta, we need to end abortions, which that would be awesome. I mean, if abortions, if never happened again, that would be great. But that's not the case. You know, abortions are happening. So we need to have something like the what you all are doing of, of helping those women. Yeah. Because a lot of them are struggling now. It's mm-hmm. they, they regret it, but it doesn't change it doesn't change what happened. Right. They need healing. And there's a lot of misinformation out there mm-hmm. that women believe, you yeah. know, about abortion and that it isn't life. That yeah. it isn't and and um Consistently, the women that I've had the opportunity to um, walk with through that healing process, um, they say, you know, that's just such a lie. You know, and um, so, again, the lies of all of the culture and all Mm -hmm. the things that are being said to us, we just want to come alongside people and say, you know, we're all there. Yeah. The, the ground's level at the foot of the cross. Mm-hmm. You know, Jesus has died for my sins as yeah. well as yours. And um, so let's see what that looks like for you and your story. Yeah. Definitely. I love that. And we'll have the link. So if you're listening right now, um, and maybe you are, maybe you've had an abortion, maybe you're listening, you've had an abortion, or you know someone that has, um, we'll have the links to all this information for this Bible study for Mm -hmm. Agape Women's Services, so you can get connected with them. We'll have the links in this video. Uh, So if you're listening, come to our website, just wcqr.org, and just scroll down a little bit. It'll be on the front page of the website. That video will be there. So you just click on that, and you can have the uh, the links there. Um, because I know someone's listening, and they and they might need this, um, so I want to make sure they ha- they have that. Uh, so now, I would love to hear. You, you said your 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 favorite part. I'm springing this on you a little bit. So, <laughs> uh, you said you what you love most about your job is is being connect getting connected with these women. Mm-hmm. I would love to hear a couple of stories. N- sure. No 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 details or anything. Yeah. Um, but I believe because stories really connect us mm-hmm. to it. Um, mm-hmm. So I would love to hear a couple stories that, that you have uh, that are most impactful. Sure. Um, one of the first ones that comes to my mind is a younger woman. Mm-hmm. Um, she was in her early 20s when she came to us, and she was really struggling. She was depressed. Yeah. Um, mm-hmm. There's lots of different hallmarks of things where women that have had an abortion in their past, and they, then they're struggling. They've not necessarily mm-hmm. connected that struggle to that abortion, yeah. but there is usually a very direct connection. Um, so she's been, she was struggling with depression, things like that. Um, she signed up, came to the study, um, walked through that 10-week study with us, and um, just found that freedom and that forgiveness. What I love about it is that at one point in the study, there's this opportunity to kind of just show through a creative expression, you know, and it's whatever they want, how to do that. So she drew a picture, and she drew a picture of an ultrasound. Mm -hmm. And the, but she told us that she had gone through the house looking for a piece of red paper, 
and she found this weird piece of construction paper. And it was, she was convinced that God showed her where it was, only red paper in her house. So she puts that on the bottom, and then she puts the drawing of the ultrasound on top. And then she 3D glues some flowers in the... Um, what would be the uterus of that ultrasound yeah. and as she described it she showed that that was what God has shown her he mm -hmm. has shown her that now she really believes that she can have children again because for a while she felt like she didn't deserve to be a mom ever wow. in the future and um, that she could have children and even if she didn't God had great plans for her life, yeah. and those flowers represented the hope that Jesus had given her wow. and the forgiveness and the freedom that she's now experiencing. So wow. that was huge. That's so, powerful. Yeah, love that story. Yeah. Um, and again, another story um, is, again, like you said, um, most powerful ones of um, a woman who came and it was, she was a teenager, and she was in her late 60s, early 70s, had really never told anybody about yeah. her abortion. And as she walked through this, she found that not only could she share it with her small group, which was a safe place, a confidential yeah. place, nobody's going to make anybody say or do anything. Mm -hmm. um, but as she found that, she found a voice that she could, God could redeem even that to help mm -hmm. others who had um, gotten in to these situations and we're struggling yeah. to give them hope mm -hmm. and to as she said hopefully not wait so long yeah to step in and say i can in christ say the truth about my life mm -hmm. and he can be glorified yeah and i can be healed yeah that's awesome i love yeah. i love stories like that because no matter how bad the situation, no matter how difficult your life, no matter how hopeless you feel, your story, your hopelessness can be a part of someone else. Yeah. You know, it's like that lady mm -hmm. that waited oh, a lifetime to mm -hmm. tell somebody is now realizing like, hey, I waited like this and this was not good for me, but I can be a part of making years better. Yeah. So God can take anything and make it into something. Yeah. Um, it reminds me of the scripture that he promises to restore the years the locusts have eaten. Yeah, wow. So, yeah, yeah. very powerful. That's that's amazing. And those stories really just, I mean, honestly, I always, I think about this a lot of, where it's like, I wish, I wish Agape didn't have to be around. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> I mean, I, I, I love that you were there, just like, uh, you know, uh, like the Isaiah house. I, I love yeah. the Isaiah house. I wish it wasn't needed. Yeah. I wish that, you know, that, that these, that the women would, you know, always feel loved and accepted and um, how, I wish they would see how God sees them. Yeah. Yeah. But that's not the case. That's not what happens. Mm -hmm. Um so what the service that you are providing, not just the before abortion, you know, trying to help uh, women and young mothers kind of walk along this this path and, and you know, hopefully they'll keep the baby. Um, but if not, you're, you're, you're not abandoning them. Exactly. You're not saying you're not worthy anymore. Mm -hmm. You're not saying you're too far for God to love you. Yeah. You're saying God still loves you. And I think that's one thing that God has taught me personally at Agape is I love that our name is Agape, mm -hmm. meaning God's unconditional love, yeah. and um, we mean it mm -hmm. because it's what He does in and through us to help each woman that yeah. He brings through our doors to know not just that we love them, yeah. and that may be the first thing they hear or the first way they experience it, mm -hmm. but that He really loves them. Yeah. And that he's made a way, he's made a path, he has a plan, mm -hmm. and there's hope for them. Yeah. Wow. That's awesome. I love that. Um, now, I'd love to give you a few minutes here to just give you an opportunity to share what God has just laid on your heart in this season of life. Mm -hmm. um, I know the pandemic's caused a lot of issues with so many, um, but just this particular season that you're in of life... Um, what has God been teaching you? Well, um, I think in this season, God has taught me not only how much I need Him, so constantly bringing me back to prayer, constantly yeah. reminding me to talk to Him, to um, listen, to be in His Word, and let Him apply that to how I live. Yeah. But also how much we need each other. Mm. So... 
um, as as we have something taken away, like being able to gather to worship and and to give God glory in our worship services. And I'm so grateful that that's beginning to move forward and we're yeah. getting back together. Um, but just there's a reason that God created the church. He didn't mm-hmm. have to do that. Mm-hmm. And so we need each other. We need the church. That is something that we communicate to women at Agape regularly. Yeah. Um, we are a beginning place a lot of times, but we really want you to continue to experience the community that yeah. God has provided for His people mm-hmm. through His church. Yeah. So, yeah. That's awesome. I love that. Um, well, thanks again, Lisa, for, for coming on the show today and, and sharing all the good that you all are doing at Agape and with the upcoming event uh, on August Second, we're so proud of him. August second, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> he got that. I, yeah, I, I uh, asked her like what four times what this <laughs> what the day that was, uh, but yeah. So we'll link to this again if you're listening right now on our website wcqr.org. You'll see the video on the front page. It's right front. Just scroll down a little bit, and you'll see the, all the links to to be getting to uh, be a part of what Agape is doing. Um, actually, do you 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 use volunteers a lot? We do. Yeah. So. Can they just go to your website to volunteer? Because maybe someone's listening and yeah. they are, you know, maybe they've had an abortion. Maybe maybe they're on the other side of of it and and want to to be a part of of helping other women. Right. Um. They can help. They can be a part of what Agape is yeah. doing. Yeah. There's an email link. There's a contact us okay. link. You, you know, so you can just put whatever message that you want to communicate right there, and we will get that information and um, address it. Exactly, that is going to be the best way to do that. Yeah, so. perfect. Okay, I don't want to leave that out. So. Yeah, yeah, thank you. Appreciate it. <laughs> Definitely. Uh, but thanks again for, for coming on. I really appreciate you and, and what you are doing for, for our community right now. Thank you so much for having us. It's a it's a gift to be able to let the community know what, what God's doing through Agape. Yeah, definitely. Thank you. Thank you.